said, Hi, Steve Gilmore. This is the Gilmore Gang for Friday. And uh, we apologize for last week, but uh, uh, anytime you want me to tell you a little story about Microsoft, I'll be glad to. Uh, <laughs> briefly, we had to roll back to uh, the previous illegal not ab available or obtainable because the only thing you can get is what they give you now version of Skype. Uh, uh, so we found that out about 30 seconds before the show last week. So it was really a good one. And of course it didn't exist. Steve, I'm hearing some breathing noise or something. So it yeah, might be good for everybody that? to mute their phones if they're not talking. Who's breathing? I think it might be uh, this culprit. Is it gone now? Yes. Okay. Kevin, that's you. That's me? Okay. Yeah. Don't breathe. Move the mic away from your nose. Step How's away that? That from better? step away from the gun. <laughs> I still <laughs> hear it, so you might uh mute when you're not talking. Okay, well we'll we'll just have to uh uh soldier on here. After all, who cares? Okay. So, uh, I'd like to welcome uh, our gang members today uh, from my extreme right, which is appropriate for his political leanings, uh, is the English guy, Keith Tier. Wow, I'm still thinking about that one. Hi. Hi. Here, how about if I give you a full screen? Yeah, I think that'll look a little better. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, to my extreme left, also an English guy, is Kevin Marks. Hello there. Oh. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> so I'm at, I'm at uh, Santa Clara University Law School today for the 15th anniversary of the DMCA conference. Really? Is, did they give uh, uh, Aaron Schwartz an award? Did I see that? Um, they might have done. Not, not at this one, but Somewhere. They might have another yeah. one. Okay. Uh, enough of the candy. Uh, Keith? I'm hungry. I didn't have lunch yet. I really wish everybody would mute their mics if they're not talking because I'm hearing a lot of noise. Uh, take, one of, uh, take one of your earphones off. Just put it right behind your head. Robert? <laughs> the only one you can't hear is me. Robert? Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Pull pull your right earphone back so that it's not on your ear. It doesn't it doesn't work for me, man. <laughs> you know, Robert's been hearing noises for about three years now. He just has never spoken about it publicly before. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Robert Scoble. What's up? Okay, welcome. And uh and our uh, Gilmore Gang Emeritus member for today is Dan Farber. Welcome, Dan. Well, it's very good to be back here with you all. Tilt down a little bit, Dan, so that we can put the title of... What exactly is your job these days? Well, um, my job is uh, to watch what's on the news and make sure that whatever's on the news is on CNET News. Okay, I'm just going to mute. Uh, uh, mute whoever's having the chips. It's it's the it's the right wing English guy. Okay, <laughs> so uh, Robert Scoble, what's going on? Well, I, I, uh, there was a bunch of things that went on this week. Uh, South by Southwest uh, took up most of my time. Um, lots of great parties. I had front row seats to uh, uh, Jane's Addiction and. Uh, um, Dead Mouse and a few other things. Um, I didn't see a whole lot new there, other than I finally saw my first non-Google-owned Google Glass. Uh, David Karp, who runs Tumblr, and uh, Phil Liven, who runs Evernote, both had Google Glass. So they're finally starting to get outside the Google walls to at least partners. Uh, yesterday, Samsung announced a new phone, which looks pretty good. The uh, 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 the announcement sucked, but the uh, phone looks pretty good. I, I'm going to definitely buy one of those. So this is your um, big Switch uh, event? It's uh, Well, I'm switching this oh, weekend. Oh, are you backing away from your no, big no. Switch announcement? No, no. I have two uh, Android phones in my possession right now, a Samsung S3 and a Motorola. I'm probably going to use the Motorola for... Uh, 
the next month or so until the uh, the new Samsung comes out, and then I'll probably use that for a month before uh, Google get, hands out something at the Google I/O conference, right? Um, so you're not on the iPhone anymore. You're you're done. No, I'm. St I still am today. Uh, starting tomorrow, I won't be. So. Okay, so you're switching away from the iPhone in favor of what? Uh, right now, a Motorola phone. And Guy why Kawasaki. is that? Because Guy Kawasaki sent me a free one. Uh, I am. It doesn't matter. It's, so in other they're words, all the same crappy. Uh, we should note that if Guy Kawasaki sends out everybody in the universe a free phone, that that would be a trend? Or is there no, a no, reason no. why you're doing this? There's a reason I'm doing it, which is I'm getting the Google Glass in about a week, and I oh, am switching okay. over to Android because I'm not going to ever pull that thing out of my pocket. I'm not sure I understand what you just said. With Google Glass, I can answer email in my eyes. So why do I need to pull a phone out of my pocket to use the, the, the Internet? You can answer the phone with your eye. Yes, you can. What are you going to do? What do you sort of wink at people on the street? <laughs> no, the phone you? call comes in. You see it up there. You answer it. It, it has a microphone. It has a headset. Why would you pull a, a phone out of your pocket? Well, then why would you use uh, uh, an Android phone if it's going to be in your pocket? Because it'll be synced to Android better, than it'll be synced to iPhone, and I bet the Android app uh, it will be out sooner than the iPhone app will be. And also, uh, Android lets the de phone developers do things like talk to the Bluetooth radios, which uh, I Apple does not let them do. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that Toys. was the big switch that we waited a month for. Toys. What's this announcement? Google Glass. It's the future. Okay, Kevin, you want to talk since I can hear you breathing? <laughs> um, I watch, I tried to watch some of that Samsung launch and I couldn't um, take much of it. But the phone specs look nice. It's actually a full 1080p um, screen, which is pretty significant. And that's you know, something we've been hoping for for a while in, in a phone. So that's good. Um, I'm, I'm not sure I want it with all the Samsung nonsense all over it, though. I may wait for a, um, a Nexus iteration. Isn't isn't 1080p a lower res than the Retina display on an iPhone 5? No. Now the I pixel thought, per inch, it's, the it's pixel much, per inch is 441 versus I think 346 for the iPhone. Yeah, but it's got way more pixels. Mm -hmm. I, I thought I one, thought the iPhone 5 had like 2500 in one dimension. Nope. Nope. You're thinking of the iPad. Okay. You're probably right. So, Dan Farber, what kind of uh, device it's, do um, you 1136 use? 1136 by 640. Okay. Dan, what do you use? Oh, I have an iPhone and a uh, Galaxy 3. So I pretty use, use them both pretty interchangeably, although you know, I'm still a little bit more comfortable with the iPhone. Um, but the, you know, the Galaxy 4 looks quite interesting. You know, at least from a spec point of view, um, you know. But you know, Apple's always been behind on the specs uh, for the most part. Uh, this is a case where you start seeing Samsung break out its own software on top of uh, Android. Uh, so that's kind of a new development that Samsung is not just kind of relying on what Google gives it, um, but is spending money and development time on its own software to differentiate itself from the rest of the Androids and from Apple even more. Dan? The, the thing that caught my eye was the picture in picture. Was there anything that, that excited you more from the Samsung software? Well, a couple things. One, the picture in picture the, and the ability to uh, um, do these kind of photo montages very easily, uh, as well as they have a, a driving application where it'll uh, make the fonts bigger automatically. So, what you know, what they're doing is basically building in a lot of the apps that you might be able to get elsewhere. Um, makes it more convenient and easier. Uh, and I think it just you know it establishes that between the three or four hundred million dollars in marketing that Samsung is spending and the the features and the cadence of development. I mean, the S3 came out less than a year ago. That. Um, you start to question what, how long Apple can maintain its laggard status, meaning, you know, not have a cheaper phone, not have a phone with a bigger screen, not you know, add some 
compelling new features with the 5S when it comes out, whenever it does. So right now, from my perspective, I'm going to say, well, what is Apple going to do? How are they going to respond to what's going on you know, in the industry with more competition? Or are they just going to say, well, you know, our phones are prettier and they work better? Um, that may not be sustainable. Well, prettier term. is is a is you know a non quantifiable uh, appellation. Well, well that's not exactly what Schiller said. He said our screen is better, not um, our screen has more pixels or our screen. You know, he just said I like it more. That, that that's what he's reduced himself to, which is he, he, I don't think he did himself any favors by by coming out yesterday and and and. Are you talking about Phil? Are you uh, talking Phil about Schiller Phil? From Apple, yeah. Robert, do you agree? Yeah, I, I agree. I, you know, uh, Apple is behaving like Microsoft execs did se six years ago when they started getting their ass kicked. They started doing that kind of bullshit, uh, mouthing off and not having a product to back it up. I, I disagree. I'm, I'm going to take the other side of this argument. Thanks, because if you didn't, I would. <laughs> you know, you, you, none of them have anything to compare with the ecosystem that's made up of the iTunes store at the middle with all the different things in it. That's not the argument. The, 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 the Apple TV and the software on the phone and the, and the, the power that the user gets from the iOS but that's e not, what e eco ecosystem means that it's incredibly unattractive to buy an Android phone of any kind, even if, it, even if, it, if the that's hardware specs are better. But that's not what uh, what the execs at Apple were talking about. They were talking about the screen quality. And I here that comes up with the screen I mean, quality. I am. I will put it on record. I'm interviewing for Phil Schiller's job here. <laughs> well, you know what, 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 <laughs> well, what Schiller was saying is that the difference isn't isn't how many phones you sell. Well, he said the difference is that whether people love your phone. And so this is still the Apple notion that that uh, Apple customers are kind of willing to go along with Apple despite the fact that they're a bit of a laggard in, in some of these features, despite the fact that the phones might be a little bit more expensive at times, um, which is a kind of conceit where Tim Cook will come out and say, or Johnny Ive will say, oh, we have the most amazing phone, just look inside it. Well, well I just want a five-inch screen. I don't care what's inside it. Well, no, but, you but want a five-inch screen, but you you don't care about uh, one-hand operation. You don't care about. Uh, oh, that know. is a that that is a joke. You know, I you know I have to hold it in one hand and type with it with the other hand. So there's no such thing as one hand. I I, I think they're focused on the wrong things. Look, they should focus on iMessage, and and the iTunes ecosystem with Apple TV, the big screen, the whole thing. Yeah, well, they are is, doing that, but that's yeah. not an argument for uh, what. Uh, these guys are talking about no, but the, but these guys these guys are talking about things that the average person doesn't care about. Well, I think let me let me put what I think about about this, which is uh, I think we're going to see from looking at the uh, laundry list of uh, of features that are in the in the new uh, Samsung device. First of all, I can barely say Samsung device, so uh, you know I don't know what you guys are talking about. Apple, really simple. Uh, easy to use. I'm already completely borged into their uh, entire ecosystem. I don't care what anybody else is doing. But get that aside, uh, you know, there's this eye detection technology, and there was an interesting article by somebody who pointed out that the user reaction to this is not exactly good because it's probably buggy as hell doesn't work it is as Dan pointed out this is software that isn't being released by uh, Google it's being released by Samsung on top of the stack so fragmentation here we come and you know they're going to be these things that people that sound cool these features that sell products you know 13 megapixels is cool but how fast as John Toshek would have pointed out uh, if he wasn't uh, speaking in uh, Virginia today uh, how fast is, can you take pictures is, well, they, they, the you know, in between thing. all that goofy uh, drama on stage, they made that very clear that it was extremely fast. So I, I think they're you know. they're making yes, they with an eight core processor, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, look, okay. this is a this is a this is a very good phone, and Samsung is building its brand. It's making people think twice. It's making people think that hey, well, I'm going to get a new phone. Let me check out the Samsung stuff. That's a big deal. Plus. 
it's it's being sold by 327 carriers in 55 countries starting um, beginning in April. So this is a lot of buzz. It's a lot of product for what's going to be probably a good price, and it's just going to put more pressure on Apple to either one up its game, or two just say, "Look, we're just better. We don't care. The Apple customers are going to stay Apple customers because we're so brilliant." And that uh, our products are so far superior well, I think to anything that's on the a, marketplace. But I that, think that's, that's a winning that, argument. I really do. But well, I don't. I think it's a winning argument for the traditional Apple, which is to say, "Hey, as long as we have seventy percent worldwide market share, we're happy." It, as long as uh, Samsung uh, does TV commercials, which uh, purport to show parents online at an iPhone store, they're basically selling Apple, not themselves. Wrong. Well, Apple's Apple. Well, there's is still, an argument. Uh, Apple is still Samsung's reference point. I mean, they yeah. their their self consciousness is that they need to be better than Apple, and they need to tell people they're better than Apple. And Apple doesn't need to do the opposite to say that they're better than Samsung. That and I, that, it was a mistake for Phil Schiller to even go on the record this week. I think he he, he screwed it up. Um, I, and I don't know if he did it or it was a company decision, but I think it was a mistake. I think I, I think that. Um, uh, the real numbers that Apple cares about is how many dollars flow through iOS versus how many dollars are flowing through Android. And apart from the hardware, it's about 90-10. And once you factor in the hardware, it becomes about 50-50. And I think that's an okay world from Apple's point of view because they, 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 they win pretty much everywhere. Uh, Apple's going to be very profitable for a long time. I, you know. What I'm arguing about is not that Apple's going to be uh, go down in profitability next next year. You know, this is just about who has the most exciting products and who's getting the influencers. But, but the, to use the it. people that have the most exciting products are not Samsung. For your point, your I, entire right rationale, now, your agree, entire man. rationale for switching, Robert, was that it doesn't matter what's in your pocket because it's going to be in your pocket. That it's the Google glasses that are going to change everything. Now that's a that's a legitimate perspective, but it's yeah. not about Samsung. That's true. Okay. That's true. But although, if you could consider just Samsung <laughs> alone, they, they have the better screen right now. They have a better camera. They have better camera features. Um, that's sort of attractive to a lot of people. So the better screen, you know, the analogy I would make to that is, can you give me a wide shot? I guess you can't. But what I'm looking at here, yeah. Do you see that? Well, there's a there, you see there's, this there's device. A, the thing that I'm looking at the most right now is the chat room, and it's on the iPad Mini, which yeah, is not as good a screen as the Retina iPad. And I will be glad once they figure out how to be able to get or wait long enough for a processor to give me the same speed with uh, with a Retina uh, iPad Mini. This I, device the iPad Mini is not as good a screen as the as the new Samsung phone. Exactly. That's my point, is, is that from a usability perspective, for how this is changing my world, this device is profoundly more important than uh, the, I, uh, than the uh, screen on a, on a, on a uh, iPhone, on a you phone know, I that's going to sit in I, my pocket. I, you know, Steve, ridiculous. I was at South by Southwest with, with tons of the world's leading influencers, and I went to conf concerts with thousands and of people. And they were all drunk, I, right? No, they were all holding iPhones or, or uh, Android phones. They were all ha holding phones. I did not see very many people going to concerts and walking around the street with iPads or tablets or Android tablets. That's not I what I'm saying. I saw most of them What I'm saying is, is that So having a, better, having a better display on a phone so you can see your pictures does matter to influencers. That's why influencers are talking about Android. That's why this, uh, this week was so interesting because it's, it's not just an Apple world anymore. And that's what's changing yeah, in my mind. But uh, also, I, I, ultimately, I, 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 hang on, hang on, Keith. Let Dan go ahead. I agree. I agree with what Robert said. It's not just an Apple world anymore, and the screen size does count for a lot of people. I do think that Apple's being very careful about when they release pro products. I would, I would guess right now that the reason that they're not releasing anything sooner than later is because they're waiting probably for the 4S to come into the cycle where people can trade them in at a low cost to get the next thing from Apple. That's correct. So, so when you say so that they're, they're looking at they're looking at contract timing. Okay, we launched the forest this time, so 
one year yeah. out or year and a half out, people can start to to um, get rid of their old phones and get a new one without having to pay full yeah, price. They, they, if you look at the sales numbers on the 4 and the 4S, even the 4 still, uh, they're enormous because what Apple is doing is is playing them off as lower price devices uh, to compete with the, their competitors, in, you know, in the larger, what is now becoming a completely smartphone but, market. But it's becoming, but but Apple is missing out, and it's becoming a bit absurd to go along with this one-handed use idea. You know, Johnny Ive declares that um, one-handed use is is the is the way that a phone should be used. Well, then how come then all these other people must be wrong, because they like to see a nice big five-inch Galaxy Four screen. I, I'm, I must admit, I personally don't like the bigger screen. Uh, aside from liking Apple, I, I, I wouldn't want an Apple device with a wider screen that doesn't comfortably fit in my hand. And the, the screens are good enough, and they're going to get better. You don't have to increase the inch dimensions of the screen to get a better screen. And it, it just feels the wrong size to me, the bigger I ones. I, I sort of agree with you guys, I'm not, but now that I'm holding bigger screens, it, it, I like them better. And most people that I talk to in the streets that have the bigger screens like them big, better as well because we're walking around all day like this. This is why the Google Glass is so interesting to me because we're already walking around the street looking like this and, and poking on things. So why not just move that screen into my eye and just keep it there permanently? That's That'll a good argument once again. That's a good argument against larger phone screens. Right, but if I need to pull out my phone and show somebody else the video I just shot of, uh, well, like Jane's Addiction, because I have a killer video of it. It was in the front row with Ashton Kutcher, right? I want to show you that video. I, it looks a lot better on my big screen stuff. I, I mean, I have an iPad mini for that reason, but I'm not going to carry around the iPad mini to date night like I did last night or, you know, around the streets. Right. Well, Robert, Robert, you'll probably agree, even if, even if we concede that point, all the screens are pretty decent these days. That you, you don't have a problem. Pro you, you really don't have a problem of showing the video in a good light on any of the screens. They're they're pretty good, but believe me, on a bigger screen, it you'd rather watch it on a bigger screen. Well, yeah, but, to, to Dan's point, well, but, but I think that what will happen. This phone also replaces the iPad Mini because it it has is, is nearly the same size. So instead of carrying the two around, you you've got one device that does both, and that that is that is a change. Well, at some point. Uh, to Dan's point, I think, or if he didn't make it, I will for him. Uh, at some point, uh, Apple will come in with a you know a five inch or a four point five inch display, which will largely make this uh, discussion moot, because uh, you know Apple uh, aficionados such as myself will wait. Uh, just sort of, I mean, Nexus Seven was a fantastic tablet, and it 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 really opened the eyes. Uh, my eyes, uh, in particular, to the idea that the, the, what we were doing with the original iPad in terms of form factor could largely be subsumed by a 7-inch or a 7.9-inch model. But I was basically just waiting because I had to wait three months uh, until the iPad Mini showed up. And, uh, and since it allows me to be able to interoperate uh, with my corporate network as well, uh, you know, the Nexus 7 is now in the category of the Retina iPad, which is that I have to charge it in order to find it. What is that, Robert? Is this Jane's Addiction, Robert? I think Robert can't hear you. Robert, I, we can't hear I you. I muted. Sorry, 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 sorry. Uh-huh. I was taking my own advice to Kevin to mute his. Uh, okay, microphone. so what were you saying while you were muted? I was saying that, you know, there's two Jane's Addictions videos. I'd rather watch the one on the, uh, the bigger screen than on the smaller thing. Right, and what is that screen? iPad Mini? Hmm. That's an iPad Mini, yeah. Yeah, you're making my point. But my point is I'm not going to carry around the iPad Mini all around the... Uh, you know, all around uh, to all the parties and all, uh, on date night like I did last night. And you're, not, you're probably not going to hold it up to your ear to receive a call either. No. no uh, that, that, again, that won't matter at all because I'll be wearing the glass. I, I think that, <laughs> fundamentally, I think that we all are making good points about the various sides of this. And I think that that illustrates what you said before, which is that this is not just a single Apple world anymore, that there are definitely... 
you know, I think that it's a Google Apple world, uh, not a Samsung world. I think Samsung is doing but, great, but uh, they kind of obviate the, uh, uh, you know, the, the reality of the fact that uh, Android was positioned as something that would uh, allow multiple competitors on the Android side to uh, proliferate. And all Samsung is doing is right now is running away with the marketplace. So I think that that's going to come back to haunt Google uh, uh, as much as it's going to haunt. I mean, I, what do we think about the... Uh, I'd like to hear, start with uh, Dan Farber. What do you think about the Andy Rubman announcements, uh, him moving away from uh, Android? Well, if you look at Andy Rubin's uh, history, you know he's been making consumer gadgets for a couple of decades now. And I think his longest stint was at uh, Danger, which is a company he co-founded, which made the uh, flip top, which became the sidekick. He was there for four years. He's been running the Android group since 2005, so that's a long time for him uh, to be in a, that kind of management position. And I think it's also the case that um, he created his own little fiefdom, and uh, I believe that Larry Page and company decided it was time, um, in the same way that Microsoft decided that it was time to end the reign of Sanofsky, uh, to encourage more collaboration between the Chrome team and the uh, Android team, to try to get uh, Android apps um, into Chrome, and to you know, and also I think Andy was also in charge of the the Nexus phones and all that other stuff. So, uh, maturing market, it's not the best place for someone like Andy to do his work and get his sharp elbows out. Well, what he's going so to be doing next, who knows? It, it's pretty so clear too, Dan, walking around walking around South by Southwest, that. The, the heat at Google is shifting to this new team, the Google Glass team. Sergey is, is certainly much more passionate about that than about Android. And if I want to be seen, if I was in Andy Rubin's spot and I wanted to be seen as the guy at Google, I would not want to be associated with a, a product that's not, uh, clearly not on top of mind anymore at Google. No, and you could see that Andy's Andy's gone uh, to be working on the next version of Google Glass, or something like that—a new operating system that that is optimized for Google Glass. What's interesting? I wrote a piece about this this week, which is, um, you know, about Google Glass and some of the challenges, the so social challenges, political challenges that come with Google Glass. And a couple years ago, I think it was Sergey said that Google wants to be. Um, the third half of your brain. The third half? And the third half of your brain. In other words, you have two hemispheres already, and they want to be a third hemisphere that basically is where all your digital data is stored, and that Google in some way uh, houses it, controls it, and uses it um, you know, to make money, to give services, and all those other things. And when you think about Google Glass and that, that thing is on a lot of the time and it's pouring data into Google's cloud and that whether it's, and if it's an Android device, it's likely running a lot of Google services such as search, which you know, is going to give Google far more insight than they've ever had into each individual and then thus be able to do more targeting of advertising and services and make a lot more money. And I think that's the next big game that everybody's playing, which is I, who is I, going to kind of be the leader of wearable computing. I, I, I don't see it that way. I think there's something else going on with the Andy Rubin shift, which is Google's um, schizophrenia when it comes to Android on the one hand and its web-based apps, services, and OS Chrome on the other hand. And what they seem to have decided, I, I think what they should do is acknowledge that Android is now their number one platform and figure out ways to monetize mobile. But what they actually seem to be doing is pulling back from Android and making it just a, a branch of their Chrome tree and going back to their Web 2.0 roots, which I think is a strategic error and a blunder. All right, Robert, what do you think? I don't think that's true. I think what the. Go ahead, Kevin. One thing Android needs is an, an up-to-date browser to catch up, and that browser has been lagging. So putting it under the Chrome team should make that more likely to happen, because one of the part of the tension between them was that Android was 
didn't care about the browser as much. Um, and they've started shipping Chrome Android. They need to backport it to the older Androids to make sure it, it is out there so they're not behind on the web as they have been um, in all but the most um, um, latest um, releases of, of Android. That That is a significant problem. They need to deal with it. Uh, Evan said we're uh, framing as Android as some sort of sinking ship. I, I, I think you're mishearing us. Uh, Andy Rubin is is a king at the top. And when, when you're king at the top, why not leave at the top after you won the Super Bowl and go and do something even bigger? Uh, or, or go and put yourself in play to change the world again. The chance that the Android team is going to change that much over the next you know, two or three years is just not, not very high. The chances that he can go into something like the uh, Google X project, you know, where they build Google Glass and are uh, doing innovative, really different things, that's where, he, where a guy like him wants to be. He wants to be build it again and do it again you know yeah but 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 robert i i would say you're right if you look at this from the point of view of andy rubin but if you look at it from the point of view of larry page what larry is doing is consolidating into a single team two very different things and i don't think kevin's point which is a tactical point about the need for a better browser on android will will be a big enough point to overcome the lack of um, the center of gravity of Google right now should be Android. Uh, up until now, looked at from Larry Page's point of view, Android is a failure for Google but a success for Samsung. Google is losing money in web advertising revenue for every Android phone that replaces a desktop or a laptop. And that's not a sustainable future, so they either have to double down on Android or they have to do something else, and it feels to me like they're doing something else. And I don't know what that something else is, but it it, it isn't good for yeah. Android. Well, it's it's clear that uh, you know every Google employee I see is, is talks to me about Google Glass now. I'm not, that is clearly the future of uh, of the innovation spirit at Google, and then they're not talking about you know how how they're going to change Android to monetize. I mean that doesn't get Googlers all hot and bothered that much. Um, where am I going with this? There, uh, you Toward hit Google on something glasses, deeper, which is that, there, that Larry Shock. Page is consolidating. And that we saw a lot of consolidation in the last week. The, the reader team gone and I Google gone. Yeah, well, it gets a reader in a minute. That, yeah, that's a but whole. there's a consolidation thing, which is bring teams, bring teams together to, to to work together. It didn't quite really make sense to me to have the Chrome team doing Chromebooks and other things when there's a a, a phone team. I, so putting those two teams together and the talents in those two teams together sort of makes sense to me. I, I it, it didn't make sense to have them separate. Well, particularly when mobile is every company in Silicon Valley right now should be. Uh, 99.9% .9 focused on mobile, you know, or mobile and tablet, you know, and I, you know, having a team that's off trying to build a desktop browser and competing with Internet Explorer, I, I bring that team and put them into building better experiences on uh, Android, that uh, to totally makes sense to me. I, I don't disagree with that, Robert. I'm saying of those two teams, which one is the core and which one is a branch? And that, to me, strategically, Android should be the crown jewels because that's the future and the browser should be simply a branch off of it uh, that makes sense to me although but, well, um, it makes, it makes even point, more sense for them to, makes even more sense for them to be working together i mean this is no different than ios and mac os or, or windows phone and windows 8 i mean all of these companies these huge platform companies are trying to figure out you know how do we basically have one platform that can go across any device right well I mean, uh, even this a is company where like this is where this is where uh, Apple uh, has been leading the way because you know they figured out that they had to make this move about eight years ago, uh, and uh, you know they started by moving uh, OS ten or you know their operating system into Unix and uh, taking advantage of uh, uh, open source and the uh, you know those kinds of uh, issues. So Android is in many ways mirrors that strategy, also. Uh, you know, when we talk about, when Dan talks about uh, Windows 8, uh, et cetera, and Windows Phone, uh, it, the jury is way out on how successful they're going to be with this move. I well, mean, uh, I don't they're, know. They're destroying, uh, I mean, their 3% their, uh, 
market share is now down to 1.8. Yeah. Uh, so that isn't exactly going well for them. So uh, I, I would point out that, and I, I'm not trying to interrupt because I, I think what you guys are talking about is really interesting. I just want to add to it that I think the um, the Google, uh, when they look over their shoulder, they're not looking at Apple. They're looking at Microsoft. Uh, that, to me, is what this, this move suggests. Uh, what Kevin said about uh, them consolidating the uh, the browser teams uh, around essentially something that's going to move to the uh, mobile platform. I think that's exactly right. But you know why why did they release this touch uh, uh, PC uh, this you know Chrome Chromebook? I mean it just seems like they're looking at Microsoft as as being the enemy when in fact. If you look at the actual sales, I mean, the surface sales are tanking uh, down from uh, estimated two million to six hundred thousand, things like that. Um, why uh, is is Google going after a touch? Uh, I mean, to me, that platform has failed, uh, and the evidence is is that Android is becoming the platform. For Google, so why would they do anything other than consolidate this quickly as possible? I, I think that thinking is right. I you know I don't get the uh, Chromebook project. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, Keith, Kevin, you always have a good insight so, into so, Google so, and what they're thinking here. So my take it in both both of these are them trying to make sure that they have some platform control and they need that on both the web and on mobile. That was the point of both these projects. They're now saying these are converging that they can do the same thing. The Chrome Pixel is it's not directly pointing at Microsoft. In some ways, it's um, it's it's MacBook Envy um, because they've got the Retina screen on it and they've and they, the the touch is just an added thing. But the big value of that is is that beautiful screen and a, and good performance. Well, I mean the MacBook doesn't have touch. I keep you know. I know. Yeah. Tapping my MacBook Air screen and you know it, feeling you know, like an like, idiot. It, They'll, they'll ship it in the awesome and then, then you'll love it. You know. Uh, I, I think we're missing a big thing, Kevin, though, which is Google is really only about one thing when, it, when you look at it as a business. It's about search advertising revenues. Yeah, and, but they don't want to be uh, about that one thing. Yeah, well, that might have been true in the past, but I think the problem is that one thing is currently threatened by a platform shift. Yeah, uh, no, which uh, is why they get ahead of the platform shift. Absolutely. Which is, right. But, that, but that's the point of the... the um, the Google Apps um, infrastructure, which is all the other things that come with Android that you have to do a, a biz dev deal with Google to get, which is um, Maps and the store and Gmail and Voice and all those other bits and pieces that overlay it and make it um, actually a, a valuable product. Now right. they're going to start shipping those for iOS too. They've, you can, you've already seen some of that roll out. And they'll, they'll do as much of that as Apple lets them because that's the piece that they value. They value that network of information moving back and forth. And they have they, they, if they think um, that with, you know, if, if you listen to them talk about this, they think the information they're deriving from that will feed into Google Now, will feed into search, will replace the, the places that they have, they can't have um, injection points for advertising revenue now with, with new ones in the future that are based much more on where you happen to be, what you, when you're looking for a place and, 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 and stuff like that. I don't... I can direct you. I don't disagree with that, but if you, if you take what you just said and apply it to the question of this merger between the Chrome OS, the, the Chrome uh, um, browser code base, and Android, the, the Chrome Pixel is a backward looking, uh, it's a very modern laptop running some very backward looking software. It's kind of Web 2.0 in its very core. I think it destabilizes uh, the notion of inevitability of. Uh, of the web, uh, you know, which is has been the cornerstone of Google's strategy. So, you know, I, I think that uh, what Robert hits on something when he talks about uh, uh, the Google Glasses thing. I, I'm sorry to uh, accelerate your mania, but just for a little, a little brief second, um, I, I think that that the fundamental about Google Glasses is is that it does feed into the notion of Google's omnipresent services uh, in an obvious way. Whether or not it, it's going to have the uptake or 
uh, reach the kind of uh, sort of uh, Waterloo that I think is going to happen with the, for example, the eye control stuff in the Samsung device. I, I think that there's going to be, uh, for sure, what Google now represents uh, uh, and how that's going to be impacted by uh, moving away from the notion of the web as delivering these oh, omnipresent yeah. services and into these mm. mobile devices doing that. That's the core of what this transition's about. Dan Farber, do you agree? Well, I, I think Kevin said it, uh, as Kevin was describing what Google is up to and what you just said, I mean, that is the third half of your brain strategy. Right. And but, as, as, know, far as, the, as far as the Chrome book that the Chrome Pixel goes, I mean, uh, Google tends, because it's large and has lots of money, to throw out things in the same way that Microsoft threw out the Surface, which is to kind of test the market with something that resembles a MacBook Air, but yet it basically runs on air, which is to say it's just a web, Hot air. basically an internet device. And oh, by the way, um, if, for example, all the Android apps could run on it, which might be the product of merging those two groups, if um, Gmail uh, and the other apps, Google Docs, etc., and those applications, which run quite nicely, we run them in our organization, and other things come along, you know, it's like, well, what, what exactly do you need that's not in this ecosystem? Well, at, at the Chrome book, or the Chrome Pixel is a bit aimed at, uh, you know, internet cafes around the world or libraries where all you really need is a web browser. You don't need, uh, in fact, you don't want anybody to run any yeah. software because you'll put a virus on there. And, and the we other saw that happen over and over again, even at the Microsoft conferences that I ran, that when you let people load software, they put all sorts of crap on the machines, uh, whether they know it or not. I, we had a virus go through the uh, Microsoft uh, PDC one time because somebody stuck a, a, you know, a, a key in that was infected and it spread throughout the whole network and not, almost killed the network. Um, so having a, a, you know, if I was running a library, I, I would be very interested in the Chromebook, uh, you know, for my uh, visitors, because all they need is a web browser, and that's yeah, yeah. it. They don't need I mean, anything somebody else. Could, somebody could make bazillions of those really cheaply. The other thing is, I think we spend too much time thinking about these form factors as opposed to saying there are two things. There's a screen, and there's a keyboard. Sometimes the keyboard's soft, sometimes the keyboard's hard. Sometimes the screen is big, sometimes it's small, but it's just screens and keyboards. So if you think of the Chrome Pixel, hey, it's a touch screen with a keyboard. All right, that's a tablet with a keyboard. I think yeah. uh, Dan, Dan's question about what else do you need is, is, is correct, literally correct. Um, but it ignores the fact that the world's moving away from those browser hosted, uh, you know, uh, cloud run applications to more of a device run application world with a cloud as storage and transport. Uh, and, and, and I think that in that sense it starts to feel very old fashioned to consume cloud apps through a browser. And I think that's a problem Google is going to have going forward. And it makes a lot more sense for them to do what they've been doing on iOS, which is develop uh, device centric apps like Google Maps that, that of course use the cloud for data, but they really leverage the device a lot more. So, that's, so that's, that's just interim stage. Is it? That's just a question of what's easier now yeah. and what's easier in the future. Yeah. So, so uh, um, Keith, that means that the Chrome team should be moved underneath the Android team, and yes. that the the Chrome engineering resources should be used to improve uh, the app and and the web in uh, Android. And if that's what Larry Page is doing, I I like that strategy. The, the monetization thing about mobile is going to be controlled by whoever controls the UI space. And that's why I think Google Glass is, is being taken so, so seriously by Google. Because as I walk through a shopping mall, the Google Glass is going to show me things, uh, both, both content offers and other things, that I can uh, say, yes, take me to that, that restaurant, and Google will get a dollar for that transaction, right? And that's going to be a big, big monetization. Google Glass also has a huge advantage 
was, which is it doesn't end around the carrier system. Carrier, it, it does not have a cell phone radio in the Google Glass. It has to use Bluetooth down to either an iPhone in your pocket or an Android device in your pocket. And that's why I say it really doesn't matter to me as long as you have iPhone or Android in your pocket, you're going to be able to use the Google Glass and be able to use these services. And if Google controls the eyeball, it does, it, they take away money from uh, Apple again, and but they certainly control the, the carrier. No, yeah. I'm serious. They're not going to control the eyeball. They're not going to control. They're not going to control the eyeball. Oh, they're, yes, you are. No, they're not. Well, wait a they're second. Gonna, let, let's, let, let, let's be Phil clear. Phil Libin has these on, and he says he wears them in his okay, office. Okay, I, I understand. While he's using other computers. And if we see the world through what the media and uh, the early adopters like, you're absolutely right, but they're not going to control the eyeball. Go ahead, Dan. Let's uh, let's also be clear that um, Google is doing the public development of glass or of this kind of wearable technology. That doesn't mean that Apple and Samsung and and many other companies don't have something in the works that once <coughs> Google has gotten you know out in the market with it and they see what all the problems are that they can't come out and do something that leapfrogs them just because you know they've been watching Google doing their own their own work and they come up with something that uh, competes very effectively in the marketplace so no, this Liam, is just the beginning this is just the, the beginning of the, this wearable um, absolutely true Liam Casey uh, who runs a, a huge supply chain over in China came to my house last Saturday and he was carrying wearable computers that were not made by Apple so the Chinese are working on it and if he has a couple in his pocket, well, but, you know, you better hope so, or else your book's going to be I about know, okay. one inch thick. <laughs> but but I think enough, what, what, right. what Google what Google can bring you is say, oh, do you want uh, in your eyeball? Do you want Google Maps? Do you want Google Search? Do you want Gmail? Do you want all these things that you might already be using and prefer? Yeah, you want them. And and Robert outlined these scenarios very correctly, which is, um, I walk into a store, and um, my eye points at something, it has some kind of barcode, it reads that barcode, it then sends back to me, uh, you know, maybe a video describing the thing, and then it says, hey, well, we have a 20% off coupon on this, and so on and so forth, and Google I, gets a, a nice little chunk out of that. I think it's whoever, even, wherever the well, I think it's, uh, guys, well, what, I think if, it's, what, if, what if your eyes wander to the good-looking woman in aisle number three? Then well, your there's no discount. Gets, then your wife gets a <laughs> Then your wife gets a notification, right? Yeah. Yes, you're exactly. gonna get some. You're gonna get some heavy slaps out of nowhere. <laughs> what did I do? Well, highlight let's also, play back the film. By the way, highlight already has a notification of high five and a chest bump, so they can easily add a slap from wife notification. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was talking to the Aspen Snowmass Company yesterday with Chase Jarvis, and they're the largest ski resort in the world. The the glasses go far beyond that because as you're skiing or, or walking around, let's say you can talk to it, right? You turn it, first of all, you turn on the glasses just by tilting your head up slightly like that. All right, so, so they're on now, and I can say, find me a restaurant uh, within uh, 500 yards. Uh, and it knows what kind of food you, you eat because I, I'm using all sorts of apps that track me and know what kind of food I eat. And it'll say, well, there's, you know, your number one choice pro predicted is a Chinese place. It's down the hill, and it has an open table computer in it. Would you like a table there? And you go, yes. And it, boom, right, right without touching anything, you ordered a, a table, and you're skiing down to the table, and they're going to have the table waiting for you by the time you get to the end of the, to the bottom of the pass. This, this is That's or, or you're going to be arguing with yourself and trying to shut down all of the automatic uh, no, uh, algorithms that have been set you up didn't, on your behalf. You didn't even hear me. I impelled this. I'm hungry. I'm skiing down the hill. I'm, I'm getting hungry because I've skied too much. I'm going to impel this. Yeah. I'm going to turn it on and say, please find me a restaurant so that I, when I get to the end of the, of the run, I can have a beer and have some food. Yeah, I, I like that. In fact, what I'm going to do is while I'm skiing, I'm going to stop for a moment. I'm going to take out my phone and do the same thing. You could, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's cold. It's hard no, to unzip I, your I jacket and little, pull your phone out of I want to take a little breather. And, and I like I'm, to just, when I'm skiing, I just like to ski. And when I'm ordering a, um, a reservation in a restaurant, I just like to do that. I try right. to separate those tasks. 
But I was skiing two weeks ago with, with the Oakley sun, uh, the, uh, yeah, I'm the sorry, goggles, with yeah. goggles on, and it's really hard to get your iPhone out of your jacket when it's cold. Well, that's it why you really need to take a break. No, when you're skiing up on the mountain, you want to you want to order a restaurant. For the, by the time you get to the bottom, it's hard. With the glass see, this on, is, this is part even... of the this is part of the challenge, which is why should you be thinking about that while you're skiing down the mountain? Shouldn't you be just enjoying that experience and looking out so you don't That's run into a tree? That's what that bar in Seattle uh, thinks. They think uh, that they want they don't want Google Glass within a hundred miles of their of their yeah. of their bar. I mean, they're, says, they're selling Murray escapism, says, not. Murray, a, Murray says something interesting in the chat room. He says, try taking your uh, gloves off in minus 10 on a chairlift. Um, it's even worse. Even if it's warm, if you drop your iPhone on a chairlift, you dropped, a thousand. Uh, in my case, $1,000 in the snow, and you're never going to find that again. <laughs> yeah. And so Just I wait till your Google the... Glasses get caught with you know ice uh, and ice over, and all of a sudden you're, you're looking at the side of a cliff. I already you know, have... I already one. have ski wearable computer, and they're made by Oakley. They're made by Smith. They have a little recon display right here. It already shows me where I am on the mountain. It already shows where my friends are on the mountain, and it already lets me chat with them with a the voice interface. This stuff is coming, and it's coming within two years. Everybody's going to have it. It's, it's so this is going to be attention surplus disorder is basically what's going to happen. Absolutely. By the way, that, that was one real interesting thing at South By this year was that GroupMe was finally useful, and I had about eight different GroupMe groups of people who were going to all the different parties and all the different events, and they, it was just a couple of notifications on GroupMe. It's pretty crazy. You know, there is one use case for the glasses that I can think of that would be awesome, which is a heads-up display while you're driving, because I, I can't imagine that the actual glass in the car is going to be used for that anytime soon, but this could give you a heads-up display while you're driving, and it's almost the only use I can think of. If they could build the software for navigation and uh, you know your rear-view mirror and things like that, or your side mirrors, I, I think that's completely wrong. I think what's going to happen is is that uh, these this is not about a single device. This is about a, a suite of devices which are detected by your presence is detected and you switch context from one device to the next. Uh, you know, already my car, and I know Robert's car, has, you know, basically this heads-up display that's uh, incorporated into the dashboard. Uh, why do I want this to cut off my already failing eyesight uh, and peripheral vision by sticking it on my head? It's just, it's not going to happen. It's, it's safer happen because it's... It's it's safer because it's right in front of you. It's safer yeah. right up until the lawsuit when no, it's when safer because Google's right algorithms you. fail somebody it's and they get because it's and right they kill somebody you. So on you the road. So you can keep your eye on the road. You can't do that when you're looking down at a car stereo or a navigation system down to the lower right. Now your eye is no longer on the road and you cannot see ahead. This is why this stuff is exciting to me. But uh, let's well, change. For me, it's exciting because it's good for cyclists and motorcyclists as well. My so point is, you is don't that have a screen there. But yeah. uh, having, having Google navigation in the corner of your eye will be handy. Well, you know, now we can worry about whether Gary Busey is going to wear a helmet or not and whether or not it's, uh, you know, sight enabled. I mean, this is a very small segment of the, uh, of the marketplace. Audio works much better than visual cues in a, in a fast moving situation like driving. That's yep. what's going to happen. Not, it's yeah. not going to be all coming into your eyeglass because what happens? when you need cataract surgery on that eye. You're screwed. Yep. 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 No, it's no, not going to happen. No, it's true. Even navigation in a car, you mainly listen to the voice. You don't look at the screen. That's right. That's when I watch cool. TV, I rarely look at the, at the screen because there's nothing on it. So yes, you're, so let's <laughs> switch. Oh, you'll hate the new phone that, that, that new phone just launched. If you look away from the screen, it pauses the video. Yeah, that, that one's going to really do well. <laughs> They're going to be angry people. It's going to be like Frankenstein. The villagers are going to be storming Google at the Plex, they're, trying to get rid of these angry. things. My stepmom yelled at me for looking at my phone, you know, five years ago. Now she does the same thing. So I don't give a shit about human behavior. Human behavior. Will so your fit strategy is, is to future. give your grandmother Google glasses so that she, you know, doesn't bother you about it. I, I agree. I th Absolutely. 
Uh, Absolutely. That's, that's how the country gets That's here. totally how it works. Anyways, I got, a, I got a cool new app to show you, by the way. Okay, but before you do that, I want to uh, briefly discuss the uh, so-called death of RSS, which, of course, uh, I've been predicting since, as Eric Schoenfeld pointed out, 2009. Um, what does anybody have to say about this? Because I, I actually... Uh, I find myself in the odd position of being a little pissed off at Google about this. I I wrote a whole post in 2009 about how I wasn't using Google Glass, and for me, Google social, Glass. What? I'm sorry, uh, Google Reader. Google Reader. Sorry. Step My out of the is... time machine, Robert. <laughs> Step away uh, from the time machine. You know, I I burned a lot of uh, brain cells at South by Southwest this year this week, so I have to re re uh, energize them. Um, yeah, so I, I, you know, I haven't used it for a couple of years. Um, I know there's a lot of fans. How many people signed the uh, petition? About a hundred thousand. So let's put this in context. How many people complained or wrote a petition about the Facebook newsfeed when the newsfeed showed up? A million people. Right. So but ten times Facebook has used people. these kinds of uh, uh, events. You know, uh, when they change something, they use it as a marketing uh, tool. So yeah. this is not being done as a marketing tool by Google. They ten, just killed it. Ten times more people complained about uh, the Facebook news feed. This is the problem, is our behaviors have shifted from RSS and into social. Now, some people haven't. You know, there's four of them in the, in the chat room who are really pissed off about this. Uh, uh, right. I, you no, know, I think it's a pure, pure numbers play. That the and I heard this in 2009 that they were killing the team because the numbers weren't there. That they saw the numbers on other things going up exponentially, and the numbers for uh, for G Google Reader were flat. And that was the problem for this team. And that that's why uh, they signaled to me back in 2009 this was going to happen. I that, don't think, that's why I, don't I signaled to the world to leave. I don't think it's numbers based because it, it came out this morning that. Reader actually drives more traffic than Google Plus still. Um, so I don't think it's about numbers. Well, that says I, something about Google Plus, not about yeah. RSS. Well, the, se yeah. the second thing is I do think Robert makes a good point. The, 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 the Internet has moved from a page-centric universe to a post-centric universe, which is the one that RSS excelled in, to now a, a message-centric universe. Message, I'd call it message-centric, not social. It includes Facebook, it includes Twitter, it includes WhatsApp, it includes email and text, especially Link, text. LinkedIn. LinkedIn. We're in a message-centric world, and the unit of consumption of a message is a stream. And, and RSS and streams could fit together, but it's a lot easier to think of other ways of dealing with streams. So I, I, I think there's a fundamental infrastructure change that's only going to accelerate I love Reader, by the way. I live on Reader every morning. It's my first hour of my day, and I'm really pissed off it's gone. But I kind of understand that we don't live in a post-centric world anymore. Yeah. The new, the new Facebook news feeds that are coming out, I, I have the new design, is really uh, wonderful. And, and the ability to build lists there lets you build a lot of the stuff that RSS lets you build. I... Um, I just, I, I don't get it. I kept looking back at it once every couple of months, and I, I just didn't get it. I, I use it on uh, Flipboard once in a while, but very rarely. Um, you know, and Francine and other people were used to that UI, but I, I, like you said, it was just falling behind in my, in my efforts. I, 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 you know, I didn't get it. I, I, by the way, I was the number one Google Reader user in the first two years. They, the team told me that I used Google Reader more than any, yeah, any other I human. Yeah, I mean, they, they <laughs> took over, they dominated. They killed, uh, what was that thing that... News... Newsgator. Newsgator. No, no, no. Yeah. Newsgator yeah. was... Newsgator and NetNewsreader. I'm talking about there was blog lines. Blog, blog lines. Oh, yeah. Basically right. so, so the, consolidated yeah, the a bunch of these uh, readers, and then Google Reader came in and killed it. So, so the difficult the, the thing that Google Reader did was build on top of the Google crawler, uh, um, and that is impossible to replicate. I mean, maybe maybe if we go and talk to Microsoft, we could get, build it on top of theirs. But having built a crawler at Technorati, I know how much work that is, and getting that right is really hard. Um, and they were able to, to leverage the fact that Google was crawling the entire web anyway and plug that into it. So that's the, that's the piece of infrastructure we're losing, and that's why it, that's why it took over because it was so much better at doing that job of crawling the web than anyone else was because it was a side effect of them crawling the whole web. Um, so, and that they also took over. You know, 
you remember attention to XML and the attempts to standardize the what have I already read stuff. They, they took over that function from the bickering groups trying to agree on that, and they just became the de facto source for that. So what we're going to see is um, that getting unfrozen and some attempt to have a shared um, state of what you've read um, built up by a bunch of people. There are at least you know, six groups building this, including Borthwick and Co. over, over at DIG. Um, the other thing that's going to be harder is coming up with a replacement for that consistent crawl um, because what the, the difficulty is if we go back to everyone having their independent readers on every device polling every every blog to see if they've changed that that's not going to that's going to scale even less well than it did before um, and it's not going to be great on the on the mobile devices to have something running in the background that polls 100 blogs you you, you need something server side to do that so the challenge is going to be building something server side to do the crawl that can be shared between different devices um, and potentially shared between different services so there's uh, there's space to build something interesting there um, and replace the, this service that Google has been providing as a side effect of them already crawling. Okay, I want to get Dan Farber in on this. I don't have much to say. Um, I'm not missing RSS, and uh, you know those people do miss it. There are plenty of alternatives. It's a little bit of a hurdle to get to, but uh, you know I pretty much have moved over to social feeds. Right. You know, I, I think uh, Betaworks do have two interesting things that, if you put them together, have a big play in this space, which is, on the one hand, Dig, and on the other hand, the Bitly, uh, the Bitly uh, link count machine. Uh, and, and if you put those two together, you could, you could get close to an automated, interest-driven version of Google Reader that didn't need that much curation. Right. So I... There are things that I'm aware of that I can't talk about regarding Borthwick's plans, and then there are things that he isn't even telling me. So uh, we'll have to wait on that. He's on a plane uh, off to Europe. But uh, I think the the fundamental reality of uh, 2009 was that uh, Twitter was coming, you know, full steam ahead. Facebook was uh, consolidating what it had and was soon to start to uh, enter into competition with Twitter in terms of, uh, of feeds. And uh, it, was, it was intuitively obvious that, uh, that the, when you have a culture, particularly in the news media, of people, uh, uh, you know, of sites uh, proliferating streams of which only a small percentage of those documents were of interest uh, that it was destroying the RSS model uh, not as infrastructure which it is critical uh, but as uh, an efficient uh, way of being able to navigate an exploding amount of uh, information uh, and you know the the whole purpose and point of uh, dare I say it track and the follow mechanism on Twitter was to be able to get uh, your arms around not what you're looking for specifically, but what you are hoping to discover based on the identities and the minds of other people. In other words, the you know cascading series of clouds, uh, which is the most efficient model for being able to absorb information. And that uh, is an evolution that, in my opinion, and I said so at the time, is based on the RSS revolution. It basically killed itself by creating uh, such a demand on the part of media to be able to stoke that pipeline that, the, that we were overwhelmed with it and we had to go to a curation model where uh, people that we are interested in helped us curate, curate uh, the information stream so that we could absorb it. And the mobile uh, moment is just accelerating that uh, even further because the real estate is less. The whole idea of, of scanning a list uh, in a mobile device is basically broken, you know, on and on. So uh, the thing that pisses me off about what Google's done here is, is that they've essentially captured a market uh, of infrastructure and then abandoned it. And as Kevin points out, you know, this leaves a huge hole that's going to be very difficult to be able to, uh, you know, they're attacking RSS's information base. 
uh, yeah, the whole uh, flow of that data. And why are they doing this? In order to prop up uh, Google+, Plus, which I think is doomed to failure in terms of this strategy. Why else would they be doing this? And, and, and I, do, I do think we lose some significant things. Um, for, I personally would lose long-form reading. And I'm finding without Google Reader, I'm going to go back to reading the sources um, to get that. And I think you also lose um, targeting yourself through curation was done very well through Google Reader. And I have never come close to being as good at that on Twitter or Facebook. Well, uh, watch. Uh, I know about some things coming from Flipboard. And I, I watch them in the in the near future, like within the next couple of weeks. They already import Google Reader and are going to uh, support that support your old feeds there. Um, where else am I going with this? Uh, I saw Evan Williams, you know, the guy who started Twitter, and he's talking a lot about long form uh, content and new new kinds of content with his new medium company. Um, It'll, you know, this stuff, whenever there's a hole that's, ta you know, whenever something gets sucked out of the industry, there's other things that come in and, uh, and uh, take it over. Um, I, uh, Francine, I know you hate the Flipboard interface. I, I love it, and uh, I, I like reading there. I, I like reading something that looks more like a newspaper or a magazine uh, rather than just a boring list well, of Google uh, Plus news is, items. Google Plus is an attack on, uh, on Flipboard, so there is competition there. Uh, the question is, is how well, they have current, you know, Google has current, which was a direct att attack on Flipboard. It wasn't as well done, but it, 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 I'm it just also talking Flipboard. about what they're going to actually invest in. They're clearly yeah. going to continue to invest in Google Plus. They have no choice. No. But they basically killed off all their social work. It's gone. I mean, everything is gone now. Uh, yep. uh, and that's the good news. And as you say, it does open up a, a hole in the marketplace. But uh, there's never been any kind of commitment on the part of anybody, really, po possibly with the exception of what uh, Dig is going to do, uh, to serve this marketplace. So it's it's bad news for people who who rely on a comprehensive list of uh, you know it's the OPML list that's being attacked yeah. right now, and uh, OPML never did get the uh, uh, traction that RSS did. Yeah, uh, Mark makes Mark Kent. Krinsky says that uh, everything is pushing us small bloggers away. Yeah, I, you know, I think that's part of what's going on right now. I, I, there's just so much noise, you know, and the filters are getting better and better at finding the signal. And right. that's going to be a trend over the next 18 months that the filters are just going to get better and better and better. Robert, on my let's, email. Let, hold that thought because uh, Kevin has to, uh, I mean, uh, Keith needs to jump and then we'll just sort of summarize. So I'll, I'll pick your yeah. thought up in a second. Keith, last thought. Uh, great show this week. I thought these are really interesting topics. I particularly think the future of Android and its centrality to Google is a huge, huge issue and very interesting to watch. Great. Thanks, Keith. Uh, Thanks, Keith. Uh, all right. Well, I want to come back to you at the, at the end, Robert. So can you hold your thought there? Sure. Okay, great. Dan Farber, uh, summary, thoughts? Uh, as, as Keith said, it was a good discussion. Some, you know, really interesting things going on in the industry. Um, and uh, Higgs boson. Well, I, I just want to comment that Dan, I'm really excited to hear that you're actually back in the technology world uh, after you know your uh, retreat into the so-called real world. It's good to have you back. Um, uh, okay. Yeah, Kevin Marks. So, so I think it's just, there's a bunch of, in, of infrastructure jigsaw pieces moving around, and that's going to be interesting. But definitely the sense I got from this um, reader shutdown stuff was, oh, right, we need to get back to building this stuff again, which was good because there had been a bit of a dead weight on um, the distributed web of this. And so I see some potential for that to come back. Um, I do, I, I'm... I'm also, in, I, th I think that the Chrome Android merge is going to be a good thing, again, because um, those platforms have been diverging, and if they converge, that's, that's good for the web in general as well. Okay, and Robert. Oh, man. Well, we covered a lot of ground. Google Glass and, and uh, the death of Reader, the death of Microsoft. <laughs> 
Uh, what else did I write? Samsung's new phone. Uh, um, yeah, I think we covered it all. Um, where was I going at the end? Because I, I I'm sorry this. I did that, but it no. Was... I you know where where we're going is the uh, filtering is getting better, and it it's not a disruptive time right now for uh, content people because there's so much content. I, you know, I I was at Randy Zuckerberg's new studio, and she has a a really beautiful, huge studio, sort of like Leo's studio. And, uh, you know, she has a crew of camera people and stuff like that. I have a, I have a studio here at Ragspace. You guys have one at Salesforce. I, I noticed that this is a trend that's going on even at South by Southwest. Uh, several, of, uh, several of the uh, old school people who used to do interviews with a little camera had studios at South by Southwest. And, um, you know, the, the noise level's going up, and so to get through the noise level, you have to uh, be uh, spend more money, and basically, you know, and that's uh, tougher for somebody who's trying to get noticed. And you were, um, you were talking about filtering, I assume that. Uh, yeah, so, you know, there's, I'm watching, so I have the new Facebook uh, news feed, and one of, the new, one of the new features in there is a all friends news feed, so you can see literally every post by all of your friends. I have almost 5,000 friends at this point. And it moves. It, it, it's not quite as fast as Twitter is, but it moves and it has a lot of noise to it. And then I look at what, what it actually brought over, uh, over to the main news feed. And the news feed is very, is filtered, is really good, good quality stuff. You know, at least on my feed, because I've spent a lot of time giving it a lot of signal about what I want to see. And so you see, you know, the articles from TechCrunch and The Verge and, you know, uh, well thought out uh, stuff from different people. But um, the, the cat photos are sort of disappearing and the, the lame ass posts are disappearing. And, uh, you know, even out of the Samsung News thing, there was uh, how many journalists were there? Uh, 500 journalists yesterday. I only saw, you know, 15 different articles. And, uh, and, so it's really tough to get an article through these news filters now, and it's going to get tougher and tougher because uh, with Google Glass, I don't want 15 articles. I want one in my eye. I want somebody to pick the news and show it to me, and, and that's why I'm, going, I'm reducing my, uh, my uh, uh, inbound to, to better and better quality. I just did this on YouTube. I deleted 200 uh, channels that I was listening to and went down to 40 really high quality channels. And now my feed got dramatically better. And that's, that's what's going to happen. You're going to re recalibrate your uh, social graphs as the tools and toys get better. Um, Flipboard's come out with a uh, curation thing, which will even accelerate this even more. Um, it's not about more content; it's about better content, and that that's that's a tougher world than it was when Mike Carrington and me and Ohm and Gilmore got our start. You know, when when we had blogs in the in 2000, there was only uh, 200 competitors. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and now there's 200 million competitors, and it's uh, quite a different a animal at this point. Yeah, I'm not so sure. Well, I, I am because I, I watch. Still read, I still I, I, I watch still look to the same people on Twitter. I you look, still look to the same people for the high quality. Discovery content. is discovery is everything, and uh, I agree with you that uh, you know it's about quality, not about quantity. But the the thing that uh, you know, I, I don't think that Facebook is ever going to offer me uh, the kind of uh, information feed that I'm looking for. It, it definitely is a, a utility and a service that is extremely and more and more valuable in terms of keeping up with uh, friends, family, uh, you know, kind of emotional relationships. I mean, it's unparalleled. I disagree. I, I, of course I you have, disagree. That's why I'm, well, it's called well, the Gilmore I have a game. I have a news feed of uh, 500 news sources, tech news sources, and it's it's like tech meme, but it's different. Um, but you also, he, you also have, uh, you know, your job is to do this, and uh, what yeah, I'm talking I, I about list, is, I have a list of autistic resources that somebody else built for me. I, I'm not very, suggesting very that it's not an incredible resource. I'm, what I'm saying is that the uh, the search or the need for these broader based tools, uh, I think it's going to come more uh, from Twitter than it's going to come in the news area. It's going to come more from Twitter because. Uh, the thing that Facebook does, which I think 
uh, unless they allow an alternative to what they do. Namely, they don't tell you how they do it. They're not transparent in terms of what they're not showing you. And and for well, me, they are they are in the news news feed. You can see what doesn't get shown to you, and then compared to what does get shown to you. And by the way, it is fucking awesome. It does remove ninety nine percent of the crap, it, it, and it's getting better every week. Okay, this is we'll talk you know, about this next time. Uh, well, I want to cover one one last thing, uh, a couple last things. You've got ten seconds. By, Oh, come on. At South no, by, seriously. I, all right. At once South I by, go past 120, then I have to re, uh, mix this on a, like a iPod-sized right. file. It's a drag. Okay. Mark just brought out at, at South by there was a lot of wearables computers, and that's true. Uh, that was one of the trends what was the wearables. The other trend was productivity apps, and I, I, I guess I'll have to take it on to my own blog. <laughs> okay. See you. Thank you, Robert. Bye. Okay, this is uh, Steve Gilmore. This has been the Gilmore Gang. I want to thank uh, our guests, Dan Farber. Thanks, Dan. Robert Scoble. Thank you, Robert. And the two guys that are gone, the English guys. Uh, I want to thank our producer and director, Tina Chase Gilmore. I want to thank Rackspace, and particularly Rob Jess, without which this show would not be on the air. And I want to thank Robert especially for his continued support of the show. Uh, as a, a key component of what Rackspace delivers to us in terms of uh, support. Uh, I also want to thank uh, New Tech and their TriCaster. Uh, I want to thank the chat room, as always, amazing. And uh, we'll see you again next time. Thanks to everybody who showed up, and especially those who didn't. We'll see you again. Bye-bye.